আসসালামু আলাইকুম শুকরিয়া দর্শক আপনাদের অনেক শুভেচ্ছা অভিনন্দন আজকে প্রোগ্রাম পলিটিক্স এন্ড বিয়ন্ডে আছি আমি এস আজম এস এম আজম আপনারা যারা আমাদের প্রোগ্রাম নিয়মিত দেখে থাকেন তারা হয়তো জানেন আমাদের প্রোগ্রামের মূল বিষয়গুলো হলো পলিটিক্স পলিসি এন্ড পলিটিশিয়ান সেই সাথে অবশ্যই পিপলসদের নিয়ে কথা বলি আর আজকে সেটাই হবে আমরা আপনারা জানেন যে ইলেকশন আসতেছে আর চ্যান্সেলর জাস্ট কিছুদিন আগেই তার অটোম স্টেটমেন্ট দিল আর সেগুলো নিয়ে আজকে কথা বলবো আর সেটার কে লক্ষ্য রেখে আজকে কিছু কেস্ট নিয়ে এসেছি আমাদের আজকের গেস্ট যদি আমি পরিচয় করে দিতে চাই আসলে ফ্রম মাই রাইট সাইড আতিক আতিকুর রহমান হি ইজ প্রফেশনালি সলিসিটর অ্যান্ড ডেপুটি চেয়ারম্যান অফ ইস্ট হ্যান্ড কনজারভেটিভ অ্যাসোসিয়েশন হাওয়ার ইউ মিস্টার আতিক thank you very much assalamu alaikum dashok i'm very well thank you brother thank to you. come here no problem and obviously my immediate right side i don't need to introduce the gentleman in the community i think he is very much well known in the community mr norul haq money he is a professional as a writer and columnist obviously he did uh, he was he is involved in quite lots of business uh, activities and community activities so as well uh, money bhai kemon asen aske hello abdul rahman thank you and immediate my left uh, he is our very special guest today actually he is our neighboring bara uh, he is standing uh, uh, parliamentary candidate actually he is standing in parliament in 2015 in west ham he is mr festas akin busuya sorry my uh, you my, did a very uh, good job well done and, well uh, and uh, thank you very much to come here uh, today here. thank you for having me thank okay. you thanks sir and immediate uh, my uh, father left actually uh, again he is uh, very well known in the community uh, uh, he is from our neighboring bar as well mr roiz bhai how are you brother fine thank you assalamu alaikum thank you very much okay Mr. thank you very much dr shot uh, we will start actually as you know we, we do in our program every week as a quiz uh, i would like to request uh, mr festas uh, to declare a winner name from last week quiz and the last week quiz was uh, you can pick up one please uh, last week quiz was which year did ford plant open in east door in uk that was in 1930 31 1920 and 1945 uh, would you declare the name please i am very very pleased to declare and there is no cheating here the winner is from <laughs> newham sure <laughs> Oh uh, my it's god. From new That's a fantastic. Sultana Akhtar. All right. Sultana Akhtar okay. from Newark. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, actually, you found your uh, constituent. Absolutely. You know, the, it was no winner. cheating. Uh, it was you. just a coincidence. Thank you, sister uh, Sultana Akhtar. You will get your prizes actually in the right time. Uh, thanks a lot to give your opinion and contribution towards our program. And this week quiz, you know, we will have this week quiz as well. When was the Industry Act introduced to publish twice annual economic forecast? Who is in 1975, 1976 or 1997? Actually, a question that we are autumn statement. After you can send your answer to pnb at channelieurope.tv. Obviously, you will get this uh, email address underneath the TV screen. Thanks a lot. I will start now, actually, it's the main program. This is our uh, political opinion. If I want to start with our Monivai. Monivai, do you have anything that bring or brought your attention during last uh, one or two weeks or current that, uh, that can, you can share with our viewers, please? Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, there are many political uh, things here to say, but one... Yeah, it uh, is. It's a 24-7 uh, era, uh, so... Uh, yeah. So one, uh, one news which uh, caught my eyes uh, is especially about coalition between the Tory and the uh, Dib Dem, which is now coming to a breaking point. So their marriage is going to be... End up in, in, uh, in misery and in cry, I think. <laughs> All right, okay, that people will okay. do actually. Now, after four and a half years of their partnerships, the time has come to account for what they have done in the country, for the country. Okay. And now they have to answer the people who are going to boot them again or not. You know. um, so it is quite obvious that um, they are trying to save their skin because they know the feeling of the Greek people, economically especially. Uh, people are really, really in a, are in, a, in a very dire stress situation. So people will uh, want to know what they have done last four and a half, four and a half years or five years. So they are trying to move away from conservative. So no, who is instigating this uh, divorce? I, I think I think Lib Dem is doing that in order to save the skin. All right. Okay. Because the... Or, or uh, people are, uh, well, some people are saying actually it's uh, conservative. They are forcing them to actually, the, they make a situation. Uh, 
to first out of their partnership. Uh, I don't think so because um, this Lib Dem is, is, is the one who is going to suffer most, or they've been suffering most for the last four and a half years. So they are trying to recover some, you know, some position out of this the economic mess country is in now. So what's happening? As you know, it says uh, uh, auto master during auto master statement. Uh, Mr. Clegg was not actually with uh, Mr. Uh, Cameron and uh, Daniel, Mr. Uh, Daniel uh, Chancellor as well. He was uh, visiting somewhere else, uh, uh, other part of the country. Well, they're, they're trying to show to the uh, to sh uh, portray to the people that look, we, we are not with them anymore because they're they're running the show, and they have to answer the questions of the people. Now, uh, there are few things they have come up with this uh, austerity plan and mix of uh, unfunded tax promises, high spending plan, and pandering to the equip. These sort of uh, things they have come up with. But end of the day, again, as you mentioned, there were uh, is a, uh, it's a good uh, good relationship or a good marriage, actually, the marriage of convenience, but some people at, say. At the beginning? Last four and a half years. Now, end of the rumors, year. All rumors. Yeah, so the, where is going all of the rumors? So Mr. <laughs> Daniel Alexander, actually, he was a uh, very interesting thing. He's a sign of this uh, autumn statement, but uh, he is opening his mouth. And Mr. Uh, uh, Vince Cable, actually, there is a speculation maybe he will resign from the government. Oof. Well, uh, it's too late anyway. <laughs> People will not spare them. <laughs> People will not spare them what they've done. They've, they've broken their promises to the students, and they are helping the government to run the deficit, and and that's uh, high. Who are the responsible? Because they are, they are, they are, they are signed it. There is a real, real question to yeah. answer, actually. The answer, yes, the country is leading towards their, uh, towards, towards their, Oh, Hotland, I don't know what to say. I'll say that later on. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think what, uh, what you're saying is the Liberal Democrats, yes, they have instigated this uh, talk of a divorce. But one thing Danny Alexander did say is he's going to stay the course acting in the national interest with the government up to the election. And I think it's uh, quite uh, honorable of Danny Alexander to do that. But insofar as the relationship between the Conservative government and the Liberal Democrats, yes, it was a marriage of convenience, but uh, let's not lose sight of the fact that both parties were, were acting in the national interest and they've been talking about this throughout the four and a half year period. And the autumn statement, I think George Osborne made it clear, this is a Conservative Party budget, not a Liberal Democrat uh, Party budget. Um, and we're not in the business of, you know, pushing through Liberal Democrats. So Democrat. it's, 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 uh, well, if he said this thing, that's been, it's, uh, clearly, it's, uh, Lib Dem has, uh, f uh, they make a situation, as I said. Actually, they made no. a situation uh, that they, they, they're getting out of the coalition. I think what the, the Liberal Democrats are running scared and they don't want to take those measures that need to be taken to uh, balance the budget, to bring the, um, grow the economy and continue growing the economy. Uh, the Lib Dems, they took, uh, they've taken a big uh, blow in the council elections, uh, in the European elections, and they're running scared. But the fact of the matter is, if you want to run the country, you have to do what's right for the country and, this and take those decisions that need to be taken. And the Liberal Democrats clearly haven't got the stomach for it any longer. Well, but the, some people there, they're telling as well, as, as, as you know, in, 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 in British politics, censor is uh, dominating two polls, but now it's third force of the Lib Dem. There is th two another two more forces coming in. One is from um, Mr. Faraz, another from uh, Mr. Uh, Alex Simon. Well, uh, I think we'll come on to Mr. Nigel Faraz, just a big topic on its own because he's a big character. But no, uh, I think the Conservative Party, and when we come into the autumn statement, uh, George Osborne made it clear the reasons why he's taken these steps. Uh, and it's really there to balance the economy. And it's a fair autumn statement where there are, um, you know, it's a fair, uh, autumn statement where there are winners and the, there are some losers who are... All right, that's fine. Yeah. I, will, I will come back uh, details okay. with, uh, I think, next segments with our loser and winner. Sure. And if I start with uh, Mr. Fester, so what is your uh, defense with this uh, the gentleman was telling no, us? It's not, a, it's not really a point of defending anything. I guess it's probably more a point of correction, if I might just say, um, that the deficit, the deficit is different to the debt, the national debt. Um, uh, he said that the, the, the government is running up a deficit. Well, the, the deficit in 2010 was about 110 billion, um, which is the amount of extra money that we're spending over and above what we're getting in. And now it's down to about 93, 94 billion. So it is going down, but not as fast as was forecasted, but it is being forecasted about 2019, 20, 2018, 2019, we will be in the surplus that's, that's of a small amount. So the deficit is being cut 
but the national debt is being very, very steep. Yeah, first of all, I think uh, maybe we will we will come with details, as I said, as we will have a uh, oh, session. And uh, that's, fine, that's fine. And uh, what uh, Mr. Moni was telling uh, about the coalition uh, divorces. Well, uh, obviously there's an election in about five months' time, right? Yeah. So you're only bound to hear um, the Lib Dems, like, you know, like was said, you know, trying to distance themselves from policies that they have supported, they have advocated, they have defended. They are very much in favor of dealing with the deficit, which I think as a, as, a, as a country, we have done a pretty good job considering what's happening in other countries as well. I think it's very, very unfortunate that they will now start um, splitting, you know, you know, breaking ranks uh, because things are going very difficult for them uh, and start talking about breaking up the coalition. Like you very rightly said, they signed up to this and quite rightly too as well, it was in the national interest. And, and, and there's very, very difficult decisions that have to be made. Um, and, and I think considering how things could be, we're doing okay. Not well enough in my opinion, but we're doing not bad at all. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, what is your opinion on that? Is there anything you, you, want to share, you want to share with the, our viewers, please? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in, uh, in obviously, uh, the country had a lot of debts uh, during the uh, labor managed uh, past years uh, uh, since, um, well, last uh, a couple of uh, Tony since he was in the power. Mm. Um, we had a lot of debts uh, going to war and um, the country. Uh, it's a long way to go way. Yeah, to yeah. fix it. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, <coughs> repairing um, the problems uh, we had. It will take time. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, the, if I, if uh, yeah, just to add on to that point, I think what we should make clear to all. I mean, we all know it, but I think it's worth reiterating: is these problems, the austerity problems, and the debt problems, and the structural deficit problems, did not suddenly start in 2010. And I think it's very important that we understand that. But, but again, uh, I legacy. think but I know everybody knows that it's, it didn't come on. It, it, it is yeah. ages and ages and on years of malpractice yes. or, 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 or not the wrong decision. The but, but that's an old story now. The people want to know actually how and who can fix it. You see, you can't see it's a no, story. It's, 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 I mean, look at, for example, the... the, the what is the way forward? We look at the global dis recession. This is, I mean, I was having some uh, very, very healthy d debate with... Um, some members of the public on my Twitter, um, uh, Fest for West Ham, uh, on Twitter. Uh, and they were talking about, you know, as if in four years, it is possible to deal with the impact of the recession. Yeah. If you look at the Great Depression of, the 19, of 1928, okay, the, it took over a decade to, to deal yeah. with the it impact of time, it. The, you can deal with the, the physical debt itself, but the impacts of it, because it goes so deeply into the economy, I don't care who's in power now. It even even Alistair Darling, before he left office, you know, the recession started before. Yeah, yeah that's it, uh, Even he was saying no, that we would have to make that. The new party's world is, is different from the one we today we have. Yes. There, uh, was, no China, there was no China. There was not Russia. No, there was no BRICS. There was not all of this. So I, I think uh, it's the impact on society that. The impact. It, yeah. So it, it's, it's going to take it, it be, four years yeah. to deal with the impacts. All right. Of again, uh, deal with the deficit. Remember, I think we will go for all of the impact details. But what I was, I was trying to figure out, actually, the political yeah. situation, as, as Munibai was uh, uh, explaining mm. this, uh, all the coalition and political uh, atmosphere in, in Britain now, the six months to go to election, yeah. there is a third and, uh, sorry, fourth and fifth force, as, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, as well as, as Nigel Farage and SNP. They are come to British politics, and they are not anymore fourth or fifth finger, actually. They are the factors now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Information now. Is it not, Mr. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway. yeah, it is their information, uh, especially from Scotland. Uh, because... Uh, will, uh, lead, he'll be, he will be declaring himself as the leader of Scotland. Well, well, he'll he'll have most of them MPs from. Uh, from so if, if if say is there is uh, so far uh, 39 MPs from well, Labour group, so there are six or uh, four or five uh, so now. Is, uh, so if he gets 30 seats in the Parliament, mm -hmm. what will be the situation? He will a lot. And at the same time, Mr. Farage is claiming he will get 20. That's when 50 MPs I is think, coming I with think, this I to uh, the rebel actually. Uh, uh, yeah? So think, how are you going to maintain this? Uh, 2015 election. I think we uh, run the risk of having more coalitions 
effectively because now the political landscape is so much more fragmented. You have so much more players now. Unlike, let's say, in America, where you just literally have a two-party state in America. Right. This, is, well, this country was like this. It, it so was, right? but 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 in, in a way, it wasn't a two. It was never really a two-party. It was a three-party in in its essence because at the local mm -hmm. level, the, the Lib Dems always got all their protest votes but they all could, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's now no yeah, more. They didn't have any power. They didn't go to power. But the local government level, they Last did. But they, 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 yeah, but they couldn't play actually the role they're supposed to do. The but yeah, okay, I see. as as they're in yeah. the government now, at least as I said. If you're on the football ground, you can play. If you're out of the ground, yeah. you whatever you say, you cannot he, play at all. Well, I mean, are we? Are you saying that we should somewhat be threatened by the SN, the rise of the SNP in the um, UK? Yeah, that the pundits are telling actually. The the biggest threat, uh, obviously, for us, is biggest threat for conservative. No, I, I think it's good for the country that there are more political parties in there. It yeah, means everybody yeah, has to yeah, get absolutely. on top of their that. That will bring healthy democracy, you think? Of course, yeah, of course. Uh, well, I, think it, I think it helps people know what they don't want as much as what they do want. I, mean, I, I think as UKIP comes more to the surface, you know, people start to interrogate their policies. People start yeah. to hear Nigel Farage talking about how immigrants are responsible for traffic on the M4, <laughs> for crying out loud. Yeah. You know, whatever next, you know, immigrants are responsible for the cold weather outside, you know. So the more these parties start to come out into the fold... But, but the interesting thing, your uh, transport secretary, gentleman, he was telling some time ago, there is, there is, a, there is a factors for immigrant, actually. is, is a road uh, uh, infrastructure under pressure, uh, local school under pressure, local uh, GPs that, that, under that, pressure. That's, that's How can you ever that? But that's different to saying that they are responsible for traffic, though. Can I, can I, can I, I, I project? <laughs> These exactly similar acquisitions and for point fingering was done 100 years ago. More than 100 years ago, I, I was reading a book called um, Wrecked Trousers Philanthropist. I, I will come to that okay. anyway. Just keep exactly. The, mm. the, the mm. common are, are, are telling people, look, we have too many people, too many foreigners, and the country Next. are going to dogs. Money by, we, I will come with you, definitely. I, will, I have yes. a call, Excel. I have a call. Islamic call. Hello. 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 TV volume take to comment even, please. Hello, who is speaking there? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. What is your question, brother, and name, please? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello? Hello, can you hear us? After yeah, TV volume? Yeah, please. Uh, after TV volume, take to comment yeah. then. What is your question, please? Sorry, I think uh, there is a line, uh, right, line problem. Yes, Muni Bhai, uh, as you said, it's 100 years yeah, ago. Yeah, and is, back, the, the is it the same scenario, actually? Same this? scenario. Why this oh, thing happened? When, when there is a shortage of jobs, when there is problems, when there is anything uh, missing or anything wrong, it's all blamed to foreigners, all blamed to somebody else, because it's lack of consciousness. Or, or, and interestingly, or the Western world or human civilization started with actually mobilizing people and, and, and that, uh, as, as, as a well, migration it, from it, one it, part to another it's part. More people is not bad news. Look at China, look at India, look at Bangladesh. Bangladesh has done 6.5% growth last year and it's going to, it's expected to top China this year. It's top China, Bangladesh. But their economic yeah. uh, model and system is different than this country, oh, actually. Exactly, that's different. Economic, this is the beauty of economics. The economics theories doesn't apply universally. It's, it's, not, it's not like physics or chemistry. So, but it is a fact, Monivai, because you see, there's a, as, it's not only a conservative labor lead them. It is a fact. You see, you go to your local GP. That is a big that is a, that is a, that is a, right. that is a problem. Okay, exactly. Go to your uh, local uh, so who, who, who school. To, who are to blame? You don't get it. Well, politicians to blame. So, so they, have, they should have forced this. They so that's, this. that's the thing is okay. doing Nigel for us or, or other other politicians now, or even uh, new now, now the problems we have in the economy in the country is a deep rooted problem. It cannot be just washed away and in solved in one day. It's a deep rooted problem accumulated over the, over the last. Since 1970, sorry, 19, um, um, first, Second World War. It started I, from Second World War. Okay, and it's just, you, just, you see, okay. you know, sometimes it is very, very good for us to realize that London does not represent the rest of the United Kingdom. But it okay. is a factor. Uh, but it, it is a factor. And, and I know that, yes, there are pressures on our schools, on our hospitals, on our roads, and so on and so forth. But to, to, um, point the finger 
at a group that represents no, I mean, the, the population of Eastern Europeans in this country, from what I understand, is less than it's about 2 million or something like that, or 3 million. Out of a population of, what, 60 million? Yeah, 60 million. To blame those for all our jobs going, to blame those for you not being able to get appointment in the hospital, I, I think it's very, very unfair. I mean, look at one of the news that came out today, same like a couple of weeks ago, that now we're having to get bricklayers from Portugal to come and build houses because we don't have enough skilled workers to build houses. A few weeks ago, there was something in the news about bakeries and mm. having to recruit people from abroad to come and work in the bakeries. Whether this is a fact or not, I run a business myself, but I know that there are some jobs that I want to get filled that nobody wants to take the jobs. That's fine. First, uh, we will have a detailed discussion maybe later on. As you know, this is a program when you come. Time is a big, uh, big issue. We don't have sufficient time for this segment. Shupra Darshak, Abra Shunla Namadir, Gezder Kasteke. It's your judgment, as I said all the time. Uh, when immigrants come to this country or any Western world, they don't come with their only mouth. They come with their, their smart head and to hand and obviously active two legs. So that's your judgment how you will judge your uh, government or our uh, next election. After Ramadan Shangit again, we will come back just after a short break. And definitely we'll have very interesting topics. Autumn Statement 2014. <laughs> We are back to our program. This is second segment. This is uh, the segment we will we'll talk about autumn statements. The title of this uh, segment is Autumn Statements, What's the Matter of the Ordinary People? Before starting, I would like to introduce actually one of our uh, gentlemen, just he is joined now. He just emerged actually, emerging leader, a uh, young <laughs> activist, and he is from uh, Conservative Muslim Forum. He's also executive member there and expecting to run council in 2016 in Windsor area. Sorry, 15. Yeah, and okay. Council seat. All right. Thank you for having me okay. today. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Hashim, to be here. Uh, obviously, this statement, as you know, uh, Chancellor, he did, as Chancellor Rosie's statement, if I start say, the economy is growing, unemployment is falling, inflation is low, but the matter of the fact is, is still a huge number of population on the tough time, struggling to lead their daily life and the very basic amenities. So our guest will unfold actually what is the reality for the ordinary people, how much true or wrong or right. So if I'd like to start first as you are the parliamentary candidate, you will represent your uh, people in West Ham, is one of the yep. uh, poorest borough, yes. uh, thank you very much, Allah, yes. <laughs> one of the poorest borough in London. What is, the, what is this autumn statement actually? What does it mean for ordinary folks, especially your constituency? Well, essentially, what the, the Chancellor of the Exchequer gets to do is that he gets this opportunity to kind of set out the spending plans, in, in essence, for uh, the government uh, and also explains to the country what the forecast is uh, for the future, um, how, where things are going, what the issues are, uh, and what the government is planning to do about it from an economic point of view. And there are just three things that I want to just point out to, you, to your viewers, which I think will be of real excitement to them. And certainly for me, as someone who runs a, a small business as well, I was very, very pleased to hear that. If you run a business, you are in a, a better position in the sense that the government is not saying that if you're employing anyone under the age of 25 years old, the national insurance contribution will be scrapped entirely. So imagine the, the rate or in my constituency in, in, in West Ham where we have a pretty high level of youth unemployment, unemployment yep. employing someone at the age of 25 now will be tax-free for you as a business, because that's the tax that business have to pay in the national employees' national insurance contribution. That's number one. The, the government is now, for the first time in a long time, is deciding to review in the hope of scrapping entirely 
the business rates. When I'm go I set up a, a business club in Newham uh, earlier on this year, which was opened by Nadim Zahawi, uh, Member of Parliament uh, for Stratford upon Avon, and talking with local businesses, one of the of most overwhelming concerns raised was the cost of business rates to their business. So for the first time, we now have a chancellor who's saying that we're going to review this in the hope of actually scrapping it entirely because it's unfair on businesses. So that is something that I think is a very, very positive news. But also, if you're somebody who's working, the uh, rates that you're going to start paying income tax was supposed to go up to 10500 from April next year. Now the chancellor has increased this to 10600 So you would not be paying any tax if you're earning uh, up, to that, up to that threshold, no income tax at all, in the hope that with the Conservative government, this will be increased to £12,500. Just to be clear to your, to, your, to, your, to, your, to your viewers who might be thinking voting Labour, under Labour government, the highest um, threshold for income tax for people who are on, on the lowest pay is, what I think was about £6,500. After that, you start paying tax. This is almost doubled now in this government, the rate that you start paying cut tax, which is really effectively a tax cut. But one thing, Festus, whatever you said, I think I can see is your cut, cut, cut is for business. Taxes. Well, yes, well uh, I'll come there, I'll come there, uh, taxes cut, and, and other cut as well, I will talk with that. So these taxes actually, end of the day, is, 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 is talking about, say, wealthiest person, people on the, in the community. No, everyone, or, everybody or was the, working. How many people has a business, actually? No, as no, no, you no. Said, I've, I've highlighted three said, things. But as, so what are they doing for the people, actually, who are really, uh, really, say, very working class and a and, and day-to-day job they are doing, mm -hmm. especially in your constituency? Okay, there if, is, if, as you know, it's, it's a business. I don't know I, don't, I mean, how many percent of people are involved with the business, but most of the people are working, actually. Yeah. If you, okay, so if... There's a Conservative government, May next year. The pledge from the Prime Minister is that if you're earning, uh, so that the tax threshold will be raised to 12,500, which means somebody who is, for example, on the minimum wage will not be paying any income tax at all. That has never happened in this country before. Uh, that's number one. As of now, the rate at which you start paying income tax has increased, almost doubled. Under this government, that is effectively, if you're on a low income, that is money in your pocket. But so that actually helps. Yeah, that's as, the as working it, class. Uh, again, uh, first, as I have to say, I have to say this: uh, the situation on the ground is different. Living standard is very, but very, that's a different, very that's bad a different, situation. That's a different so, issue. As you said, uh, taxes. Oh, well, as I said, is when will you be? Uh, well, when is your party will be? The party for all people, not only for the group of people. That's the people are thinking when I go to the street, when you go to this, I, I, especially I, the part of the, pe part part of the border of the we are living in, in say, in East End. Yes. People, they feel very hard that the situation, actually, government is not doing anything for them. Right. That's the feeling. Well, f first of all, we've got, we've got, to, we've got to say this. Um, we cannot um, divorce entirely or even in part, any discussion about the economy of where things are now from the wider economic history of this country from the last five, six, seven years. There was a global economic crisis. I am not pointing a finger at anyone. The impacts of this is not going to go away immediately. Um, there was a huge economic contraction which took place. Hmm. We are still trying to recover from this. Okay? And I think what the government has tried to do recently is to try and get a fine balance between tax cuts and, tax, uh, and reduction in expenditure. But they're struggling. But they're, whatever figures they have given, even when uh, Chancellor came to, well, the party came to government, 2010, mm -hmm. whatever figure they have given, all figures are just broken. So not, ent all not entirely, they not be, entirely. They I mean, look, okay, figure okay, one. Okay, okay, I'll okay, tell okay, you okay, this, okay, um, okay yeah. on, the, on, the, on the debt, on the debt, that has not gone down as it should have done, okay? But the deficit, is going down. That is a fact. Well, uh, the de <laughs> deficit is. What was, it, what, was it, what, was the, what was the deficit in 2010? Yeah, it's, it's a 2000. Uh, well, 14, 15. There is a speculation. No, 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 no. What was the debt in? Yep. What is? It? Yeah, there is a 91 okay. so billion down down still. What, so what has happened? What has happened is that he has said. On debt and deficit, government has failed. Totally How? Failed. On on what? Yeah, How? Totally failed because they, they haven't been achieved. They haven't been achieved at all. I mean, okay, but actually, are you, are you, actually can I just ask you then? Oh, are you complaining? Are you, are you complaining? Are you complaining that they failed on no. that? No, you see. Now, no, are you complaining that they failed on that? 
The Fed, of course, is complaining. So, so if the government had actually gone further because to, to, to cut the deficit, what would have happened? Able to earn any income, any revenues from the creation of jobs, from the growth, and from the all the other things, good things they're saying. I'd like what to touch on. I'd like to touch no, no, on one point. What you're saying, yeah. Okay. What? Now I tell you something. Uh, I tell you yeah, something. Yeah. Okay. It, it's going to affect everyone. It, 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 it's going to be very uncomfortable for all politi politicians of all the use. Yeah. Since I came to this country in 1943 um, years ago, I've been hearing yeah. price control, wage control, this control, this card, that card, that's deficit, inflation, uh, inflation, everything. But the fact of the matter is this. The noble decision of all parties have ever dared to say the truth. The truth is that our economy or Western economy is on a declining path. It has to be told. It has to be told to the people. Look, people. So it's a lack of fair uh, source, uh, source of honesty and honesty, transparency. Yeah, of course, of said. course. They are not telling the truth. I'm not saying they're lying, but they're not telling the truth. The, the, Wilson, a great prime minister of the Labour Party, I used, to, I used to admire him. He resigned as soon as he, on the election, he resigned in 1974. Why? He resigned. He foresaw that cloud is coming, China, India coming up. They're going to take over our job. He, f he was a visionary leader. But he, he handed over the power to Kalahan, and Kalahan made a mess of it. <laughs> then Agatha Sir came. And so she, made a, she made a big mess of the oh, country. Are you serious? Yeah. All right. Are all you right. serious? Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. If I, if okay, I, okay. I, okay. Let me come. Oh, I said, I, I said Kalahan made a mess. You said yeah. that. Agatha Sir made a mess. Merge made a mess. <laughs> then <laughs> hot pudding was a deal. All right. No, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, just, no, no. Just, just stop that. Just have, stop that. Have, what if, what if, what if, what if I will, I will, I will. Look, look. The country has gone to a state. America printed four, five trillion dollars. England printed about one trillion pound, or less than one trillion pounds. Um, Japan did. But Japan did. Japan what they did? Is, uh, what, what they did? Japan. They are struggling. They are still struggling. Yeah, they're, 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 uh, shouldn't they're we, after, shouldn't, after, shouldn't after, we be pleased after, after that in 20, England we are growing at three percent? I think like no, Germany, no, no, Italy, Italy. I'll come down. I would like to give opportunity to this young lady. I think just before you go there, the thing is, we understand a strong, strong economy is the backbone of all government spending, of government investment, of tax cuts. But and this is what this government has delivered. It may not deliver to your liking, but they have certainly delivered to stabilize the economy. And this has been shown, not are we only the fastest growing economy in the G7. Uh, it's all, <laughs> all right. All, all, okay. All, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. all it just I, I'll, I'll the well, number I'll, No, no, just one yeah. other thing. We have set out our plans clear, transparent, in uh, readable English. That's fine. And I will come on to, you know, you know, I will come down. Well, I will we'll come to him as, as, as a young, you, know? uh, you just finished your university, you're going to your uh, working life. I think we're going to issue, and if uh, one of the other guests is saying that, you know, this government's done nothing, you know, they failed in debt and deficit, I don't think that's true. I think you need to look at where we were and where we are now. And uh, um, I think you need to also look at the fact that... What did the projections are? That's yeah, no, exactly. The thing about the Conservative government is that they've got a credible plan and they've got a credible leader. And that's not true of any other party. That's not true of you know, the Labour government. They haven't come forward with any economic plan that is sound. I'm not defending Labour. And, uh, 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 and well, also, uh, it's just another, another issue here. When you talk about this as a party not for all the people, it is. Because with the Conservative government, you can go through the whole university system for free now. And with the latest postgraduate loans for 10,000, yeah. you can go through degree level and master's level for free. Yeah. No other government has done that. No other party Hashem, has done I'll that. I'll tell you for your kind information, I'm sure you, your, your grandfather or your, your dad, he didn't pay money in this country. That's, so that's the government this time. They introduced the tuition fee. But you know, still, they're, they're, they're making, no, they're no, making no, different. No, no, no. Now, now I know. Came in under labor. <laughs> okay, but that <laughs> tuition fee was not that amount. We know that. Oh, that's, well, that's okay, so let me, let, me just, let me just be clear. Let's just clarify yeah. this. The, the, la the major government had a review, which then the um, tuition fees was implemented by labor. Yeah. It was about 1,000. But that was this under, was tripled. Under this was tripled. Pay for the people, uh, the especially tuition, for the, the, uh, the low background or low wages people. The, but the, the tuition, situation came now. The tuition fee was tripled under the Labour government. Before Labour went out of, when were, were kicked out of office, they launched another review. Hmm. This review stated that the cap on tuition fees should be scrapped entirely. So universities should be free to charge whatever they like, effectively introducing, introducing the U.S. style system, All right. a market economy in our, in, our, in, our, in our education system. This government 
decided to put a cap on what they could charge, which tripled it from three from from whatever what to to uh, to that's a to, one thousand to what to nine thousand what it is to nine thousand now. Huh. Okay, from 3,000 to 9,000. So it was tripled on the Labour, it's been tripled under this government, but had this government not chosen to ignore the review that Labour brought in, there would have been no cap at all. That's fine. I will ask you, the gentleman, obviously he just finished his university. Yeah. Ask yourself, ask you, I definitely you speak to your friends, sure. what they feel. Obviously the tuition pay I said, maybe yeah. your father or your uncle or, or your senior, they didn't pay at all or they paid a very less number of money. Even the politicians who are on the parliament right now, most of them didn't pay any tuition fee. It's your generation, our generation, we are paying the tuition fees. And the government, you are supporting the party, your party government actually, they make the situation that poor people cannot go to university at all. It, it wasn't this government that did that, but this government is correcting the mistakes of the previous... So correcting is, is correcting. from 2000 to 9000. But the evidence, the evidence may shows that more question. people from poorer backgrounds are going may, to university may, now. That's true. May I ask you a question? The, 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 but so, but let's, just, let's just get this fact right for your audience and for their benefit. Yeah. More young people from poorer backgrounds are going to university now. It's a fact, so it cannot be denied. Okay, yes, they, they, they have the university okay. debt, but the level at which they start paying the debt back is raised may, may compared you, to the previous may, government. Let me ask you a simple question. You have to answer it. Oh, you, it, it depends. You can, you, can, you can ask me my name and I know what that is. That's as simple as it gets. No, listen, you are depicting a rosy pictures for the government. Government has done this, done that, done this. Fine, good. You've done a good job. Why they are trailing in opinion poll only, only by 32%? That's fine. Money, well, I will ask the question, Mr. Atikbai. Eh? There is a statement from Ed Ball, Mr. Ed Ball MP. What he branded, Mr. Chancellor, that every target missed, every test failed, every promise broken. How people can trust him with his all of the okay. promises? As you know, in 2010, whatever figure he has given, all figures is just disappear, and, and there is no correct figure as OVR uh, report came as well and there is a forecast uh, I think it's 2018 to 19, 19 there will be a buzzer surplus 4 billion. Yeah. How people can trust well, him? Look, look, when George Osborne came to power he uh, when he was the Chancellor he set out a plan and he stuck to his plan even though Ed Balls was jumping up and down in Parliament going red in the face to the point he was I thought he was going to explode in Parliament uh, the uh, IMF would say, no, 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 you're on the wrong plan. George Osborne stuck to his plan. Famously, he didn't have a plan B uh, because it was a blast all over the media. But he stuck to the plan and he stabilized the economy. Yes? Yes, he has missed well, his task. There, there is a judgment about by the people or are the pundit, actually. Is no, I, I, I don't economy. think it's in the there is a, the economy there is, is a stabilized. Chance, as actually, is maybe it's going to uh, no, uh, no, deeper no. situation no, no, no. in now, now, yes, he missed his targets. Yes? But there are numerous factors for that. The global recession was worse than anybody predicted. The eurozone is not being performing very well. I, I can see you're nodding, you know, you're shaking your head. <laughs> but these are facts. Well, you yes? blame, you blame no, no, I, I'm not blaming and anybody. Blame no. and, and then blame who? <laughs> Sorry? No, you see, there's a tier yeah, no, 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 let, let me finish, yeah? Okay. Um, and then you have um, tax receipts have fallen because uh, the tax-free allowance has been uh, more than doubled. The national insurance contributions are being cut. These are real changes that the government has brought in to help those most in need. Now, um, what has Labour done? You mentioned Ed Balls is saying, well, we missed that. Ed, every single point that Ed Balls has contested against the Chancellor, he has failed on every single okay, count. Just, just okay. Let me just, let okay. just say, now let okay. me. Okay. Okay. Just, uh, okay. just yeah. kind of counter what you said, and, uh, you know, I'm saying uh, paint a rosy picture. Well, of course, if I'm to do that, but I'm, I would be very happy to, to say to your audience areas where I think we certainly could have done better. I don't, uh, yeah. I, I don't think things have been perfect. I think there's still far too many young people who are not in employment, who are not in training, who are not in education. I, I think that is, we're wasting too much of the talent that we have in our young yeah. people in this country. That is not good enough. Progress has been made, but I don't think that's good enough. I still think that we pay far too much taxes in this country. Um, progress has been made, yeah, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's good First enough. First, for your kind of information, that's fine. You said that you were paying part too much tax. I'll tell you what Chancellor said. As Chancellor said, uh, uh, the return of Britain, back living with it means. But he did not spell out how we're going to get there. As you said, tax is going, uh, going down 
as far all wealthiest people, actually, those people are talking about, as I said earlier, argument. The tax is actually, what he is doing, tax is doing lesser for wealthiest people in the society. That but poor the, are getting poorer true. day by day. No, okay, look, I looked into the, the no. let me ask you, what was the highest rate of income tax that the richest people in this country paid on the labor? What was the percentage? What was the highest? I can't, I can't tell you of, of, of it. It was 40%. Oh, okay, fine. Now, no, what is the, no, what is the rate no, of tax no, they're paying? If you were, so they're paying 50% you know, and this government no, cut tax down to 45%. Is down then? Why tax revenue is down then? I'm sorry? Why tax revenue under this government is down? Why there's not enough money? Well, so collected because, from all this growth, all this job employment, all these activities you have predicted, you're saying, well, when the, this government is done, then what is the income gone? Well, well, if 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 if, 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 there's no, if, if, no income, if corporation tax is being cut, you're only bound to have that, that, reduction. That, that, that in people understand that this <laughs> is why if, if, income, if, your, if your income tax is being cut, of course that's less money to the exchequer. So how are you going to think that? Then? I mean, this no, is no, the how are you going to the budget? Balance the budget. No, no. The, how are you going to, be, when, are you going to reduce when, the debt? When no, the is growing, when government, when businesses are growing, as it is doing now. Look, the revenues come in. Let me tell you one thing. These if, are if, all, can I just these say are all are artificial, artificial, artificial. No, 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 have been permanent full-time jobs. Yeah. That is from the ONS, that's number one. Number two, the area where the, the, the deficit is being dealt with have come from lower interest payments on our debt. Okay? At, it's only three billion, at, 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 only three billion. No, wrong. Only until billion. recently, until only recently, billion. this government only. was spending only. more. Only three billion. Until billion. recently, this government was spending more on interest payments for to service our national debt than we we're spending on policing. And uh, I think law and order put yeah. put together. All right, all right, gentlemen. Let, let's let's talk about a little bit is is uh, autonomy and authority and cars. Well, let, what now just come back on this point, which uh, Festus and what which money by just for your viewers. The amount, uh, the new jobs that are being created in the last 12 months, um, a large part of that is small businesses. Now, small businesses uh, do not pay tax on the year. There's a slight delay before tax is paid. Growth is 3%. That's a prediction, not by George Osborne, it's by the Office oh, of Budget oh, oh, Responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes? Yeah, I know. You, you accept we are over a trillion pounds but sterling but economy, but yes. What happened after 17? 2% growth. Sorry? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, let, 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 let me finish that. The growth prediction has gone down, actually. Anyway, no, no. Just as you and said. As a since you mentioned the zero hour contract, the Labour Party is the biggest employer of the zero hour contract. Okay, fine. Yes, but. No, 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 no. no, no, no. You're going to blame Labour. Please, we're blame. not blaming Labour. This, this is a fact. This, this is a fact. We're not blaming the joke. I will tell you the joke. He said, always leave three envelopes. One, first one, oh, yeah, blame foreigners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I will blame for opponents. Yeah. Then blame some foreign causes or reasons. Yes. And then what? Then you have to blame yourself. Then we are not, we are not, blame, we're not blaming. We are not blaming Labour. I am not blaming Labour. We are 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 not blaming and the facts are getting distorted by, you know, various people I mean, talking about various different things. I, mean, I suggest it, we all actually I mean, look at what the facts are. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah. If I go first as again, um, yeah. the Chancellor actually made a plan as uh, his economic uh, forecast and all of this. He wants to make a uh, uh, budget surplus actually four billion in I think 2017, uh, 18 years, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Yep. So how are he going to make it? As you know, public spending as a percent of GDP fall to the lowest since the 1930. Mm -hmm. And the cut is uh, so deep that cuts actually police, local government, justice system, the, he has to make around 60 billion pound of money just removing from the, all of the service. So do you not think this amount of cut actually is going to too far that people will get affected directly? Okay. Especially for, again, don't, don't forget Mr. Festas, you are representing from the community, 
who are really, really from yeah. lower income backgrounds. I, I, I understand this. I grew up in Canning Town. You know, I, I, my council estate is still there. You know, um, I, a lot of my staff live in Newham. I, my business is, you know, I operate in Newham. I, I work with voluntary organizations in the area. I see this, and I've spent time working with young people trying to help them to set up their own businesses. I, I feel this. I see this. I, too, have been affected by it. What I do think, however, though, is that, well, look, bef when the government started to spell out a lot of the spending plans up until this point in 2010, what did Ed Miliband say will happen and uh, Ed Balls? They said we're going to have a double-dip recession, unemployment is going to go through the roof, interest rates will have to be jacked up, there will be a whole lot of recession, uh, there will be a whole lot of repossessions. When the, when the cuts were being announced in 2010, when the reality started to hit home that we have to start living within our means. What has actually happened instead? You're right. We've had more jobs created. Please, I know you're shaking your head, but, the, but if you look at polls after polls of public um, uh, opinion about how the local authority is performing, more people have trust in the public, in the, in the local authorities now. Uh -huh. more, crime is going down okay. despite all this. Now, I don't mean it is okay I that we have um, just a vast swathe of co cuts, fine. but all the political parties agree now. Okay, Mr. That something has I will to be come done. back to you because in the time as uh, we are, uh, Moniba, we are going to break actually. After break, we will talk actually who is going to write direction or not. Moniba, okay, we will come back after this. Shubhya Darshak, I think by we'll come back. Shubhya Darshak, just stay with us. We will come back with our this uh, autumn statement plan in third segment, just within a very short period of time. Stay with us. We are back to our program. This is a third segment. Actually, still we are talking about autumn statement. Obviously, then we will end up with general election 2015. Before going to main program, I would like to remind you this week quiz. When was the Industry Act introduced to publish twice annual economic forecast? Is it in 1975 or is it in 1976 or 1997? You can send your answer or opinion on anything. P and B at channel I Europe TV. Just bottom left corner of the screen, you can see uh, the, our email address. And obviously, you can uh, ask the live question as well. Number will be on the side of the screen. Uh, before, uh, well, I would like to uh, re discuss again this thing. As you know, the coalition is divided than ever. Politics is hotter than earlier. Mr. Faraz is drumming his wagon. Mr. Miliband is under pressure. And the latest edition, Mr. Alex Simon is coming back to Westminster. But we are, as an ordinary people, are in the middle of all muddlings. Are we clever enough to understand their tricks and rhetorics? And our panels will help us to unfold actually where we are now and what should we do as an as a ordinary citizen of the country. Uh, if I start with uh, Mr. Uh, Hashim first, uh, as you said, you are going to uh, attend election, I think, next year. Uh, council election yes. and in the Queen's area. It's very good, uh, nice to hear. Good luck to you. Thank you. So what is the political implication of the last, uh, obviously this is the last autumn statement before going to general election and, and your area is council election. Uh, yes. What is mean to your local people? What um, is the political message actually sending government to the road level? For me, I think the autumn statement is um, as we're coming up to the elections, it's a bit, it's, it's a bit of, um, it's, it's basically real politics is what I like to call it, real politics. It's each part of the party is trying to differentiate themselves on the level um, uh, with the elections coming up, saying, you know, if you vote for me, you know, this is what you're going to get, you know, more of what we were doing, um, and if you vote for me, you'll get the others. So if you go down the Tory path, you're going to get um, taxes and, you know, spending cut um, or reduced. And welfare uh, cut Or if you well. go, if you go, yeah, but well, I mean, sometimes difficult decisions have to be made. 
um, considering where we were. Or alternatively, if you, you know, want to go down the route of fiscal responsibility, which got us here, then make a choice. But here, here are the two paths. So here, um, you can either choose one or the other. Where would you like to be? So uh, I, think that's, I think that's what it comes down so to. So what really. is that speech for your constituents, actually? What do you want to say to them? That is an autonomy statement. Is it right for them or, or yeah, it's not? For my, my area, is, um, without getting into too much party political stuff, um, it is, it's conservative. It's a conservative safe seat. So, oh. so for us, it, you know, this, this statement is we, we want, want to see more of this, really. Um, going into the long run, and you know, we've got, we believe that Osborne has, you know, um, you know, credible plan, and that he will deliver. You know, he's making tough decisions um, when he has, <coughs> has to be made. So, all right. Uh, then, if I go to uh, Mr. Festas, uh, obviously, statement done. As people are telling, actually, this is a, a election statement. Election just on, uh, nearby. He made a promise in 2010. He failed to do that. Opponents, everybody is telling. And at the same time, he is making another uh, statement just before uh, uh, last budget. And he knows uh, his time is, uh, is ticking, actually. Mm. So do you think <coughs> people will be convinced and people can trust on him yeah. his record? Well, you know what? Can I go on record? And I hope I don't get into any trouble with CCHQ for saying this. I will be one of the few Tories who openly come out and say, I am glad that Cameron didn't meet his targets to cut the deficits by 2015, OK, in this parliament. Because had he done so, it would have been much more difficult. So what actually has done, what he actually did was to slow down the pace of cutting the deficit and spread it out over two parliamentary terms instead of one, which is what, which is what Alistair Darling effectively was saying. The Labour Party wanted to do that. So okay, so at the yeah. moment, they won't talk about it. They won't talk about it. But look, there's an election next year. I think what the Chancellor has very, very strongly said and very accurately done, put as well to the pe British people, is a vision of the kind of Britain that the Conservative government offers to the people. One in which, if you work hard, you'll be able to keep more of your money in your pocket. If you choose to get out of your bed in the morning and work, you'll be better off than not working. If you want to go to school and progress with your studies, the state will be there to support you. He's not saying a, a, a system whereby the state is going to just abandon you. Of course not. There are lots of measures in here which actually show the state supporting people and businesses. Yes. However, sorry. Yeah, go on. However, I think we have to remember that unless an economy is growing, it would be impossible to pay for all the services that we all care about, like the NHS like our schools, like our roads. Look at the amount of money that's being pumped into road infrastructure recently in the transportation. That comes because the economy is growing and we do not have the same cloud of uncertainty hanging over our economy from the financial markets. Okay, so we really have to realize that we were at a very, very dangerous point as an economy when this government came into power. The fact that we are where we are now is true credit to this government taking the right and very unpopular choices because if you look at, just, just look across the pond. Go to France. <laughs> Go to France. I lived there 10 years. <laughs> and you're here now. <laughs> Great, we're glad to have you here. <laughs> Go to France. Even Germany, Germany just barely scraped through 0.3 or 4% GDP growth. I know. Just. It came from the research. It's but but look, look, at, look at us. We are now, well, we're at 3%. Yeah, that's, well, first as, as a part, he said these numbers are, are is, is different, different actually. Yeah, How yeah, you represent and who is representing? That one thing yeah, you yeah, said yeah, is yeah, two money. government actually two oh, is two times. Come. I'm sorry, can uh, uh, sorry, 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 I will. I'll come to you definitely. As you mentioned, the uh, uh, so government is actually uh, is planning for two terms. I mean, yes. 2010 and, yeah. and uh, uh, 2015. Exactly same time, actually same opportunity. You can say, uh, Mr. Miliband actually he asked for. Give me mandate, give me two times, I will fix it everything. So, who is the right person to do that actually? First and of all, what is the major difference between your leader promises and the Mr. Milliban promises? First, uh, first of all, the uh, first of all, the Labour Party are yet to spell out how they're going to make this savings. They will not do it because all the savings which this government have put through the Parliament, they have opposed all of it. So if you're saying, oh, we're going to do it, but we just want extra year on top of the, what the Tory party is promising, 
but we're going to oppose every single thing that you've said you're going to cut. Well, tell us, where is your credibility? This is the reason why people in this country do not believe that Ed Miliband can be trusted with the economy. He just can't be. All right. Okay, so it's all well and good saying that we're going to spend this, we're going to spend that. They all have to be. They all have to be paid for. Oh, he's been tried. He was in government until five years ago. But he was not a captain anyway. He was not a captain. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Munibai. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'd, and I'll come on to the first thing. Yeah, you wanted to share something? Oh, what yes. I was going to say, just on that last point that Monibai was saying, Ed Miliband uh, was Gordon Brown's protege. The oh, problem, Ed yes, Bolles, Ed Bolles. no, no, uh, Ed Miliband was there as well yeah, in the government. They were the team. This, yeah. this, uh, this uh, opposition, the Labour Party opposition, is substantially the same people that were in government that yes. got us into this mess yes. in the first place. Now. They haven't spelled out what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. I was on Question Time about two weeks ago with Chuka Omunad saying, what oh, the Labour Party is going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to you know, pave the roads in gold. And the question really has to be this to, uh, to the Labour Party. You couldn't do it then. 13 long years you were in government and you achieved, you know, you left us in this mess. How can we ever trust you again? They've not even sought to even try to convince us how we can trust them again. Same old policy, same old labor, same old nonsense that we get from okay, them day in, day okay. out. All right, well, unless you can no, give no, us a no, one no, credible, no, unless you can give no, us one credible, yes. one credible me. labor party policy, just one credible labor party policy. International problems, international situations, international this and that to blame, hmm. okay? Labor party could have blamed, they, they, did, they could have blamed the world. They did. They did when Gordon, Gordon Brown tra tried Gordon to save Brown the world instead of the well, country. Of course, he, played, yeah. he, he played saved. He did save. But yeah. I must give him credit of finding out the formula how to fund the bank. No, well, even Obama didn't have a clue. He he first come up with the idea that look, you have to pump money into the banking system first. <laughs> That's what he did. I think that's a no-brainer. If you okay, if you got no money in the bank, you pump <laughs> money in. <laughs> well, printing money. <laughs> What, printing money? Well, we have to print money. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> this, this is what the easy Keynesian economy of, of, of his best. Can I just make Keynesian economy at his best? Okay, yeah, no. okay. All right. Okay. Let me let's yeah. go about the election. Yeah. Gordon Brown, uh, sorry, not Gordon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> um, Osborne, he had, had, he had both eyes on his election, not one eye. Okay. He knows that this is the last time the, he, to save their vehicle, uh, sorry, their ship from drown, drowning in this. Uh, what's the, I say, channel. <laughs> channel, I, <laughs> the English yes. channel. <laughs> I, I don't blame Labour anymore. I blame Conservative now. Because they Obviously have been in power for last four years. Yes. The problem is they will cut the visit. That's everything in one we parliament. Have. They didn't. God, Alistair Darling said, I'll do it in two years, two terms, two parliaments. Now, Osman is doing so the who same. who gets the growth for the economic okay, recovery? Who is correct? Who is more foreseeable? All right. Who, than, who's uh, responsible for the right. economic okay. growth? Certainly okay. not Ed Miliband. Who's responsible certainly for the, for the spike no, no, number no, no, of people no, 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 who are now in employment? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm who's responsible for the anyway. amount of businesses now being created in this country? Historic levels. Who's responsible for that? Job created. Yes. Jobs, strong economy, growth. For the first time ever, we now have more families in employment than ever before. We now have the lowest number of children in the history of this country no, coming out of workless it, families it, than ever before. Is really relative term, Who is because you have to go no, 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 to see no, the situation. No, 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 this data are released by the ONS. I will come back to you. I got a caller, I will come back to you. Asalaamu Alaikum caller. Hello? Asalaamu Alaikum. Have you come out of the show in Okay, maybe the uh, uh, line disconnected. All right, go on, guys. Yeah. So I was saying that, look, I'm not by any means saying that things are perfect. I think we have, there was a report that came out this, uh, just a few days ago about food banks and that more people are not using food banks. I have done some, I've supported food banks before and these guys do amazing jobs. But let's face it, food banks have been around for quite some time, but even one food bank being around, for me, is one too many. I think it reflects very poorly on our society. I mean, I come from a developing country by birth in Nigeria um, and uh, I know I've seen poverty. I've seen what it's like to have to li to not have anything. You know, I, I had you know friends who had to go through that. But you never would have thought that in Britain yeah, food bank. that you would have any food bank. I mean, if you go to Nigeria or go to Bangladesh and tell anyone that you have food banks where people have to go with a piece of paper to get food, they'll tell you that you're All joking. Right, gentlemen, let's go for uh, 2015 uh, election politics. Obviously, as you know, it's, uh, uh, the statement is gone. 
I think is the beginning of our conversation. We we had a little chat. Uh, Mr. Uh, Nick Legg, he was not on the uh, Commons actually when uh, his statement gone. <laughs> Vince Cable was uh, just uh, sh uh, just he was uh, he, he just kept quiet. <laughs> he now he is opening his somewhere. mouth. Yeah. And Mr. Cable was telling actually this uh, uh, Tories plan actually is economic uh, uh, spending down and and as as to 35 percent of GDP as a wholly unrealistic. That is. As Chancellor promised, actually, he will make uh, uh, your uh, budget uh, uh, surplus in 2018. Mm -hmm. and, and he very cleverly made it before 2020, actually, before another election. He will make 23 billion surplus. He's not, it's, it's, he's not actually trying to confirm only one election. He is trying to do another election. And, and so of it's it's hundreds of promises and so rosy promises. Either way, he doesn't How win. He either maintain way, he it. doesn't win. And now, what the, my question is actually, is their partner, they're not, even they don't believe how ordinary people will believe them. I don't think it's so much the Liberal Democrats don't believe it. The Liberal people. Democrats simply can't comprehend. Uh, they simply are not in a position to take these tough challenges because they're running scared of their past defeats, uh, particularly of uh, the council elections and in the Euro elections. They're more scared of the SNP taking their seats yeah. and you keep ripping Nick, uh, Nick Clegg to shreds than they are of anything else. Now, this is why I said the more players in the more political parties in the system, the better. One thing that has become clear cut is parties are working so much harder to clarify exactly what their policies are. Now, the autumn statement sets out this government or the Conservative Party's uh, view of where we're going up to 2020 and how we're going to balance the budget, how we're going to get a surplus, and how we're going to bring the economy back to its uh, pre-recession days. What have you heard from Ed Miliband? Nothing. What have we heard from Ed Balls? A lot of nonsense. Nick Clegg has not said anything. Vince Cable but can't make, put it. They, they will give their statement so much. Who? They need to uh, consume all well, this. They, they, will they, will, they will give their time. statement, but Ed Miliband has been going on and on and on and on. And everything that the Labour Party has come up so far has turned out to be wrong. Okay, it's one thing that we have heard, um, and if I could just correct you there, I take, um, is that uh, both Ed Miliband and Ed Bowles, for the first time, are finally admitting to the British public that they too will have to make government cuts. For the first time, the truth that you were saying that politicians were not telling us, they're finally saying it. The only the, difference is that, is. The only, <laughs> but why has it taken them five years yeah. to admit that if they were in power as well, they would have had to make cuts because there was a huge problem. I mean, no government would be making cuts unless there was a reason to do so. Okay, because in 1997, when Tony Blair came into power, the, the, the outgoing major government had a relatively um, balanced budget. This is a surplus. Okay, uh, there, uh, there was, uh, there, uh, there was uh, a debacle uh, of that. I mean, dep depending on how you calculate uh, it, was either, the you know, of um, it was either neutral or it was a surplus. When 15% was the interest rate. <laughs> uh, right, but the thing is this, okay, now we in, in 2010, there was a massive amount of debt that we as a country, we all have to pay, in fact, all of us will be dead by the time this, the debt <laughs> is dealt yeah, with. Yeah. Our children's children will have to pay this debt. Debt has been hanging around in the British economy, the British government, the British state for many, many decades. It's not one day. That is, that is Why? Not, because, it, because as a nation, we are not producing enough income. We are not exporting goods. We are not exporting any manufacturing goods. That is why we cannot make any money out of foreign business. We, are all, we, have, to, we have always a deficit foreign account. Only is it deficit for an I think we've come beyond that, uh, beyond that question. Well, just to get back to the actual point, if you rem uh, remove the corporate veil of the Labour Party PLC, we will find the ugly face of self-interest. They go around preaching the wor the, for the working class, how they understand the working class. We know Emily Thornton. Um, well, well you, you know which picture I'm talking about. Talking we know exactly what she meant. All right. Well, like, that no, is no, as, no, as no, individual exact, person of the no, no, no. This, his, this is uh, exactly what she, so. she knew what she was saying. She knew what she yeah. was doing. Now you ask, well, what are the Conservative Party going into the election with? Well, they set out yeah, the autumn statement. Uh, I think that's a uh, huge uh, conversation, and this uh, will maybe come uh, later in future. If I ask this gentleman, uh, young gentleman, um, as people are thinking, actually, conservative hoping our promises uh, in, on economy and NHS uh, will overshadow concern. As you know, in next election, there is a, 
at least a couple of issues will come, obviously, Europe and immigration. So do you think as government this economic plan, say autonomy statement and, 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 and the uh, is, uh, budget is coming soon, that will overshadow these two major things? Um, I think first and foremost, I think the economy is one of the most salient issues out there. Yeah. So, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the party did always agree to give a referendum on Europe if, if, if we get to that position. But I think the economy is first and foremost, and I think this uh, government has been proactive in its approach and it's, it's not been reactionary. Um, and also, just to come back to one of the issues to do with policies, policies have uh, an economics of time lag, so it takes a certain amount of time for them to get. Uh, to actually get into full swing and have effect, and that takes about 12 to 18 months. So that might be why you think the parties are setting out plans which they don't know about, because they know when the policy might actually have an actual impact, um, which will aren't clear up any confusion previously. All right. So yeah, um, and as as a Tory, you know, in Europe, but not run by Europe. Um, <laughs> that's just clear as it is. And immigration, you know, um, people can come to this country, and you know, as long as they contribute and work hard, you know, they're always welcome here. And and. That's, that's, that's fantastic. So, uh, uh, if I ask you, actually, gentlemen, what is the last tricks of Mr. Chancellor before election 2015? What is the last tricks? Tricks, yeah. Tricks. Uh, I, what, what is his last Magic trick? trick. I, I don't know. I don't have. I don't have access to uh, his myself. bag of tricks. <laughs> okay. Um, but certainly, what I do hope that he will be able to deliver. Um, is uh, a conservative majority. I think that is absolutely necessary for us to be able to sustain the economic growth. Because I, I don't think we can emphasize enough. Uh, and I hope your audience also buys into this argument that, look, it's been difficult. It's been a difficult last five years. I have felt it. I'm not a millionaire. I wish I was. I tell you what, my kids wish I was. But I'm not a millionaire. Uh, I, young, too, I too have been, thanks. I don't feel that young. I too have been affected you know, by the, 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 gov the reduction in government spending. But the fact of the matter is that I know that you can't keep spending what you don't have. Eventually, it will catch up with you. All political parties and all politicians need to be more honest in telling the British people that we are spending far too much more than we are getting in. And if you want to help the economy to grow, we're here to support you. Hence the reason why I think the tax cuts is a really very, very, very important issue. And it's something that the government, I think, has really done a very good job in delivering. That's fine. Thank you. Actually, time is very short. It's coming. If I ask Muni, a very quick answer. Who can balance the book in a fair way? That is a fair, honesty, transparency. Lowry. Lots of terms Lowry. came here. Lowry. So people cannot trust, actually, this Because people. they have not been telling the truth for the last 50, 40, 50, 50 That's fine. 60 years. What about uh, the gentleman? <laughs> um, maybe in, in future, you're going to be MP, but, uh, you will stand and, and you will make uh, lots of people happy in your I, I mean, look, I, I, think what what think, do you think? think I think what the public need to ask themselves is, not so much, you know, do you trust politicians is an old question. What we really need to look at is what are the parties saying where, how are they going to deliver what they say they're going to deliver? And to really view it against the facts, uh, judge this uh, government on its uh, performance over the last four years. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Labour, this Labour opposition is substantially the same party that was in government that and they didn't well. deliver Thank anything. You. Quick, gentlemen, you, you are the last. Uh, okay. So if I ask you, who can make a fair balance of the economy? That's fine. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Hashim. Thank you very much, uh, Festus, and, and Brother Munivai and Atik Bhai. Shupriya Darshak, before uh, finishing our uh, uh, program, I would like to remind you again this week quiz. When was the Industry Act introduced to publish twice annual, annual uh, economic forecast? Is it in 1975, 1976, or 1997? Uh, the last statement actually is mine. And I will ask you, Shupriya Darshak, you are the only one who can judge actually who are the right. It's not a matter of left or right. It's a matter, obviously, there is a concern came honesty and transparency in politics and policy. Obviously, election is coming just six months. Everybody will come to you. It's your decision, your choice. You will make the right thing, and who will run the country for you and for the people of the United Kingdom. Stay with us. We will come back next program. By this time, you stay good. Assalamu alaikum.